This week on InPost, we're processing an image from Crystal Pier in Pacific Beach, California. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to InPost. My name is Scott Davenport, and thanks very much for joining me. Uh, today we're going to process an image from uh, my Pacific Beach shoot. Uh, you can see the In the Field episode by clicking the box here on the video. And uh, today, uh, really today's uh, post-processing is about blending a couple of images together uh, to um, take care of some motion that was happening in the shot. I had surfers that had come into the scene and were walking through, and they ended up adding a really nice element to the photo but capturing the right number of frames so that I had uh, surfers that were still and not blurry, and at the same time um, making sure that they weren't getting you know, cut by the ocean or things like that. Um, that was really the challenge. It wasn't very difficult, but that was the challenge for this week uh, for the processing. So let's get over to the computer and dive right in. So here in Aperture, uh, I settled on uh, these three images. They're all essentially the same, and the difference is the surfers that are moving through, and of course the waves, those are moving. Let me zoom in here. So overall, get that out of the way, um, I really like the way the ocean is in this one, and I like uh, this you know, surfer sitting there. That's kind of cool. I'm going to move to the next one, and I don't like the water as much, but we can see that this surfer here is blurring. I like his positioning here better, though. I find that's, um, I don't know, a more interesting pose than the previous one. And then my third frame, so this guy had gotten up, done some more stretching, some other guys came out to start uh, catching waves, and this guy's just crouched down, and that looks cool. So when I go back and forth between these two images, looking at this surfer who's kneeled over his board, and then this guy who's stretching out, I liked how the two of them were, you know, facing away from each other that I don't know, just created an interesting dynamic. Neither one of them is getting you know, cut by the wave lines. And if I look back to my first image that I like uh, these waves here, watching this ocean line, they're not, that's not going to intersect with any of the surfers. So I really won't have a problem blending. Even these you know, lumps of seaweed across all the images are really stationary and with maybe exceptions over here. So there really won't be an issue with the blending. So I'm um, going to take, oh, uh, one other thing. Get the inspector up here. The uh, one thing I did do is across all three images, set the white balance to be exactly the same. So you can see, you know, 46, 41 Kelvin across all three of them and uh, did the uh, same settings on the exposure as well. So all three of these images will be identical in terms of white balance and exposure. So when I bring them into perfect layers, I won't have any problems with color shifts or you know different color casts or things like that, or at least it'll be very minimized by uh, normalizing everything before going into Perfect Photo Suite. I'm gonna select all three of those images, right click, and do edit plugin and send them as layers into Suite 9 so that each one will be a layer within a single document. So click that and we'll see on the other side. Okay, so uh, here I have the three layers into perfect layers. I've obviously finished the image off. But let me walk you through this process here. And so um, this is the main image, I call main image because I like just about everything in it. I like the ocean, I like the sand, I like the pier, I like the sky. And uh, the other two frames, we have surfer left, I like his positioning there. And then surfer right, I like his positioning there. So working these from bottom up, uh, keeping in mind I'm only going to end up masking in these little bits here. I'll start by getting surfer left and surfer right happy. And so I want to reveal the right hand surfer and the quickest and simplest way for me to do that is just to use a gradient and I will use linear right, click it right about there. Let's see, move that over. I can shrink the feather and there we go. I have the surfer. I don't care about any of this you know, misalignment. I mean, obviously you know, the ocean's off, this guy's you know, fuzzy in the water. That None of that matters because all I'm interested in is getting this surfer to show up. Now up to the main image. 
I'm going to re-enable or make that layer visible again. So everything's gone. What I want to do is bring in these two people here. I'm going to zoom in uh, at 100% and get down into this area. And let's work on the surfer on the right first. So I'll toggle off. Okay, there he is in frame right around here. Very simple. I'll grab my masking brush. It's already set to paint out. I'll bump my feather up quite a bit, find him, and just kind of sweep through there, there, there. And that's basically it, right? Um, if I toggle the mask on, control M, it's, it's very wide. And if I look closely and carefully, I don't really see any color shifting. But if I were concerned about that, I can switch the brush to paint in, reduce the size some, and kind of just, you know, bring back in some of the, the sand, that I, sand, some of the masking here that I might need to worry about, you know. So now that's, you know, maybe even just doing it without seeing the mask and just brushing through there. I think I clipped the edge of the board on that one. Yep. So doing like that. And then the same thing for this guy on the right. Now his board's fine, but his body position is different. If I toggle this off and on, that's different. So I'm just going to start in the center of him. And oop, let me switch to paint out. I'll use the X key to toggle the brush to paint out. Let me just circle through him, get his arm, rest of his head. There's a little bit of seaweed up there. I'll take care of that later. And there we go. Really quick, really simple. Let me fit that back. And so now I've got these two surfers and this wonderful, you know, ocean and pier that I liked from the top image. The next thing I did at this point was to do a layer, new stamp layer, and that created main image one. Now, you'll also notice the difference between main image one is I did a little touch up, a little clean up. Um, let me turn it off and turn it back on. You'll see some bits of seaweed down in the right hand corner go away, toggle that off and on. And most is this, uh, you know, uh, tire tracks, you know, the lifeguards drive up and down the beach checking things out. And I cloned those away. I'll show you a quick example of how that works. Let me zoom in maybe 50% so we can see some of those tire tracks. Now, you want to use the clone tool for this because if you try to use something like the uh, Perfect Eraser, you know, if I click that, it's going to try its best, but it doesn't really know what to work with. And so it gets all muddy and fuzzy and doesn't look right. Let me undo that. And the same thing with the retouch brush. If I try to, say, retouch away, where's my brush? Make that a little bit bigger. There we go. I try to retouch this away, it's again going to get fuzzy, messy, not very good. So this is where your clone stamp tool is the best tool for the job. And I like to make a very, very large feather, maybe even 50% here. And let's see, these tire tracks kind of look like this area, so I'll do an option click. Now I've got this swatch of sand I can move around, and I can just start brushing that through. And I did the same thing all the way through, and you get a much cleaner result all of these footprints start to blend together. And in the end, we get something that looks like this. And it's all nice and smooth. So that was the magic for smoothing out the beach. Next, I have the same image again, but I did some blending. Let me turn this image on, you'll see the difference. You can see it gets brighter and there's a little more contrast. And it just softened things up a little bit. What I've done there is duplicated this layer. So just use the duplicate layer button. That gave me main image too. I changed the blending mode to soft light. You know, so I'm blending this image with itself. And you can see it has you know, lots of different options. I was either targeting overlay or soft light, and in the end I chose soft light. And I backed off the opacity a little bit. This was primarily some experimentation, getting a little more contrast. Um, and uh, you know, it, it did end up softening the, the water quite nicely. And even a little bit on the sand though not quite enough, we're going to do some work on that in effects. So with this image, I once again did a layer, new stamped layer to create the main image three. So main image three becomes these two layers combined. Essentially everything visible got into this one layer and then I brought that into effect. So what you see visually here on the screen, the combination of these two layers was brought into effects to create the final image. And so now let's get into effects and I'll show you the few little touches I did to finish things off. Okay, here in effects, 
So uh, the first thing I wanted to do straight away was to soften the beach. Um, everything is soft in the image except the beach. And I didn't want to just go through and smudge things around with a retouch brush. That's not going to work for things like the seaweed that would get muddy. So I turned to a blur filter and I'll highlight that here. And you can see that it's softening the sand and I'm using a gradient mask to apply it only to the lower part. The thing that was most useful was this surface preset. I started with this and then played around with some of the values. And uh, let me clear the mask for a minute. Let me, I'll, I'll copy it so I have a stash of it and let me reset the mask. Now look what surface does compared to say something like normal, which is everything's blurry. You can see the pier gets blurry. Um, you know, everything gets soft. Radial is certainly not what we want. And then motion doesn't make sense either here. But what happens with surface? Look at the pier. It stays pretty much in focus versus normal where that gets very soft. And that's pretty darn cool. Um, it, uh, you know, only found, you know, surfaces really of, of things to soften them. Now it did too much for the, to the water, which is why I used the mask. I'm going to put that mask back on. There we go. And so it kept the water as is and really just softened up the beach. I see if I did anything in the blending options here. Nope, nothing fancy there. And uh, that was um, the main step to soften up the sand. Next was up into color. And this is uh, really an auto color. Just It started off with auto. I kind of liked what it did. It, it, it almost gave it this um, bleachy type feeling. Really taking the sky and the ocean away from my eyes and the things that I really see are the surfers and the pier. Um, it was pretty cool. Um, see if I did anything in the reds and oranges. I don't believe I did because I wasn't trying to pull anything in. Just this is a straight auto and it really just lowered the temperature and cut down on the tint a little bit. If I remember correctly, let me click auto here one time. Yep, it had really cranked down the tint too far for my liking. So I backed that off, you know, more toward nominal and just experimenting till I saw something that it's like, oh, that's nice, that's pleasing. Uh, that being said, I did want that color back in the sky. One of the reasons I stayed there was to bring in those oranges. So the adjustable gradient is what's doing that here. And it's really just darkening the upper half of the frame. And by doing that, it's bringing back in those pinks and those oranges that are in the scene. And you can see I've positioned the gradient, you know, in about dead center of the ocean and stretching it out really far. Because I want to get those reflections of those colors, right? This big, nice drift of clouds are up here. And the color that the clouds are catching, it's reflecting in the surface of the water. And with that longer exposure, we're getting those same color reflections on the uh, surface of the ocean. So that's the uh, adjustable gradient. Started with the darkened presets and pretty much just kept it there. And uh, the only tweak was applying the, uh, the mask to only have that occur for the upper part of the image. Onward to a tone enhancer. So here's tone, bringing a little more of that color back in as well. And started with auto. It did some nice things with contrast. I popped the clarity up just a little tiny bit, mainly for the pier, to give those edges crispness and did a very subtle tweak on the blue channel, and on the red channel, and then the green channel you'll see nothing. So peaking up the, the blues and the reds were mainly for the skies. I played in the highlights areas just to give those a little extra touch of color. And last but not least, a vignette. I began with the big softy preset on this one. See it right there, which was a little too dark in the corners for me. It looked too obvious. And so I, I, I began there. Undo. Whoops. There we go. Now it looks like it made me select that. Well, let's fix it up. Yet, scroll down. And I played with the brightness. Now I backed the, the vignette effect off some so that these corners weren't as dark. I believe I also bumped the size up too. So if I bring the feather all the way down, you can see I'm really only trying to affect just the corners. So 
pop that up a little bit up there and so forth, just to give it a slight touch of a vignette. So here is the before and the after. There you have it. And really, it, it came down to those, uh, those surfers. They really anchor the shot. I think that's what, uh, what made the shot so interesting. As far as post-processing techniques, um, the one thing I found um, that was nice was blurring out that sand a little bit, just to soften that up. There was a lot of foot traffic, and that could be distracting uh, overall in the scene. I wanted your eyes to go to the surfers and the pier and everything else to be kind of soft. And I think that came across pretty well. Hope you've enjoyed this episode, picked up a tip or two that you can use on your photos, and uh, I'll be back again uh, sometime soon. I may be taking a short hiatus here for uh, a little bit of vacation time. We'll see um, how quickly I can get back in front of the camera to uh, share some more videos with you. In the meantime, love to hear from you. Please send me your questions, reach out to me on social media, and I will be back again in the future. Bye.